Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 9 of Pumping Iron, the review series for the classic muscle cars of Gran Turismo 6. And in this episode we're featuring one of my personal favourite muscle cars in the game, not necessarily my absolute favourite, but definitely up there among my favourites. It is the second of the two classic Dodge Chargers, the slightly newer model with a slightly smaller engine, the 1971 shape Charger 426 Super B. Now, the 426, of course, as with all muscle cars, refers to the cubic inches, and that works out to a 7-litre supercharged V8. Now, although the engine is smaller, it's actually about the same as the older model 440 Magnum Charger of the more familiar shape in terms of how fast it makes the car go. Now the performance is good for the power to be honest. Many of the muscle cars kind of fall behind in terms of top speed. This one although obviously not among the very quickest of muscle cars, it's certainly no Plymouth Cuda in terms of top speed, is still very good for a big classic muscle car and it is one of the bigger muscle cars it's very wide very long and has a very large overall appearance now the spec when fully tuned is 859 horsepower and 847 pound feet of torque and that's kind of unusual for a muscle car usually a trait of muscle cars is that they have usually significantly more torque than power but this model actually has more power than torque, which is interesting. It also weighs perhaps less than you might expect, because it looks like a pretty heavy vehicle. And although it's definitely not the lightest of muscle cars, it is pretty reasonable. It weighs in at 1,365 kilos, with the stage 3 weight loss, of course. And thanks to that pretty reasonable weight and decent power output, has, again, a respectable power-to-weight ratio of 629 horsepower per tonne. Now, the PP on this one is very well placed, I would say, at 583 PP. And for a vehicle of that kind of power, that kind of torque, that kind of power-to-weight ratio, and sheer straight-line performance, it's really, really well placed at just over 580 PP. In comparison, the Plymouth Cuda, of course, is just under 600 pp, which, although that may not sound like a massive difference, in a racing situation, that is a big difference. The difference between 583 pp and 600 pp, the amount of vehicles that you can use in that difference in pp range opens it up to far more competitive rivals. So this car being a lower pp with its still very impressive spec is a good thing. And of all the muscle cars in the game, this is one of the most competitive around the track. I use this car by far the most at the 500pp level. And at the 500pp level, it's very difficult to beat. Now, on the Nuremberg Ring, which is the last place you'd imagine using a muscle car at the 500pp level, it's one of the quickest cars I've ever built at that level. Now, I used to use the 440 Magnum Charger of the more familiar shape, the classic shape Charger, or more classic shape Charger, because they're both classics, of course, at the 500pp level. I used to use that all the time, until I entered a lobby using it, and a guy pulled out one of these, the Super B, and he gave me a great run for my money. So I thought, oh, I'd better try it myself. And when I did, it turned out to be even better than the 440 Magnum at that PP level. Now, in terms of overall performance, to be honest, the two chargers kind of cancel each other out because they both have advantages in different ways. Now, overall, I would say this is by far the better handling model of the two. The balance is just perfect for track racing, and it feels almost like a competition machine rather than just a big lumbering brick. Of metal which is what some muscle cars can give the impression of being. It costs 80,000 credits which although that may sound pretty expensive for a vehicle of its caliber and being a classic that's pretty good really. 
Overall, its performance, as we said, top end is not the quickest of muscle cars. It does around 230, 240-ish. So, again, around the same as the other Charger, around the same as a Chevelle, that kind of thing. So, pretty well placed for most of its rivals. And at the end of the day, there's not many tracks where the Oldsmobile Tornado or Plymouth Cuda can use their speed advantage. Only, perhaps, Le Mans and Special Stage Route X. That's about it. So on most other tracks, this car gives them a fantastic run for their money. And the great thing about this particular muscle car is that with many muscle cars, they're only competitive within that niche. Their range of effectiveness starts to fall, really, when you put them up against modern Japanese performance cars, which have huge advantages in both size and weight, etc. This one doesn't suffer from that. It's hugely competitive within the muscle category, but also way beyond that. It's massively competitive on pretty much any track, to be honest, against a wide variety of opponents. I've beaten Skylines in this car, I've beaten Subaru 22Bs, I've beaten other muscle cars. The list of cars that this car can just wipe the floor with around the track at the 500pp level is pretty surprising. Now, I don't race it at all, really, in its fully tuned form, so I can't say how competitive it would be at the 583pp level, or even close at, say, 550 or 575, but based on how good it is at 500, it's definitely going to be, at the very least, extremely fast. Now, obviously, at those PP levels, the rivals you go up against are a lot faster. But the 500 PP category is one of the most competitive and widely loved categories of racing. And if you're looking for a good car at that level, which is at the same time a car which far fewer people actually use or appreciate as being as good as it, it actually is, this car's great for that. And if you haven't got it yet, it's one of the best muscle cars in the game, I would say. In terms of sheer handling, if nothing else, it's by far one of the best muscle cars in the game. To be honest, I might even say it's the best handling muscle car in the game. Now, there may be one or two that I've forgotten and factoring in there, but the handling is so good on this car. Unbelievably good for a vehicle of its size, age, and weight. And if you haven't tried it out, I would strongly recommend doing so. Whether you're a muscle car fan or not, it's a highly competitive machine. So, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.